Well, I hope you're having a great Wednesday. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead. Uh, this is your devotional for September 29th, and we're continuing our walk through the book of James, and this book is power-packed. And so I'm going to read right now James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. And just invite God to speak to your heart. Invite God to bring His truth alive in your heart and your soul. Beginning in verse 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it has grown up, gives birth to death. This is a life cycle here. This, this is a picture of the challenge of sin. So, so here's my message for you today. Prepare for temptation. It's going to come your way. You live in this world, and there's temptations all over the place. When Jesus walked on this earth, he was faced with temptation. He didn't give in. He stood against it. He spoke the power of the Word of God against the enemy. But he was tempted. If Jesus Christ, God in human flesh, was tempted when he walked on this earth, I better be ready to be tempted, and so should you. And so prepare for temptation. And here's the under, kind of, kind of the subtext, the underlying theme. Prepare, to temp, for, prepare for temptation when it comes, and then cut it off early. Stop it early. This, this life cycle of sin that leads to death can be caught, cut off. And so here's just a couple thoughts from this passage. We all face temptation. Brace yourself. Prepare. Don't be shocked or surprised. Keep your eyes open and see it coming. Cut it off at the pass. Second, God does not tempt us. God may challenge us. God may at times test us to strengthen our faith. But temptations from the enemy, temptations from the evil of our own hearts. So don't attribute to God what is not God's. God does not tempt people. Next, we have broken hearts and broken lives. There's sinfulness in us. And our own sin nature, even when we're saved by Jesus, cleansed from our sins, our own sin nature can begin to draw us along into areas of temptation. My suspicion is you've got two or three areas that the enemy just kind of knows. If he can throw a lure out there at you at the right time in the right situation, he's going to tend to get you on the hook. I mean, there's there, there certain areas of temptation. I know for me, food is a big temptation. Caring for my body is a challenge all the time. I got to be careful there. I know images before my eyes can be an area of temptation. I've had people say, as a pastor, you shouldn't be honest, that honest about your struggles, but I'll tell you what, if you put images in front of my eyes that are, sometimes are not good or healthy, there's times where my response isn't, oh, that's terrible, you know, get, get it away from me. It's like, oh, that's interesting. I have to be aware of the areas where I'm challenged. You need to also. What are two or three areas that when temptation comes, you tend to just kind of whoop, get sucked in? Be aware of it. Acknowledge that. Be praying about it. Have other people pray for you. Tell someone about it like I'm telling you. I have areas where there's challenges. Be honest and have accountability with other Christians. And then there's a process in this journey. And here's my suggestion, and I believe this is what God wants for us. Cut things off early in the process. So here's the process, that, just from the short passage in James. There, James, there's enticement. There's sort of that seduction. The enemy throws something out there. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit of chum in the water, a little bit, little, little bit of you know, enticement, something that's interesting to you. So watch for those enticements. And when you're starting to feel that, Stop it right there. No, I'm not going for that. Best place to cut it off is before you even start walking down the road. Then there's sort of this birth process. There's conception, ideas, thoughts. Maybe I'll walk down that road. Maybe I'll get involved in that. Maybe I, maybe I will do that. And, and, and there's that kind of that conception in us where it starts to, to grow. Then there's birth. And it talks about how it gives birth to sin. That's the action. This is where we cross the line where we live in disobedience, where we don't do the good thing God wants us to do, where we enter into the wrong thing that we know we shouldn't do, that we don't want to do, but man, the enticement's there, the conception in our hearts, and then there's a birth of action. When we hit that point, it's time to repent, confess, and run back to Jesus. But then it goes on and says, but then there's growth. That sin gets tentacles in your heart and your life and grows and grows, and then it says eventually it leads to death, a spiritual death. You feel distant from Jesus, you feel distant from people. That habit, that pattern is, begins to take over and there's a death that happens emotionally, relationally, spiritually. Now here's, here's the best thing to do. Early in the process, before the conception and the sin happens, cut it off. I'm not going down that road. 
and put everything in the way that you can to keep yourself from walking down that path that leads to brokenness and leads to spiritual death. But even when you cross the line, God's grace is sufficient. Then you repent, you confess, say, Jesus, I can go and start over again. You can wash me clean. And, and so here's just a couple quick examples, okay? Embezzlement. If you're gonna embezzle money, if you're feeling tempted to embezzle money, I'm not gonna tell you how to embezzle money, I'm gonna tell you don't do it. But, but there's sort of this enticement, you're in the workplace and you could take this thing, you could use this thing, you know it's cutting corners. And the first thought comes to your mind, that's when you cut it off. You confess it to your spouse, I was kind of tempted, it was kind of weird, I don't even know why I thought that. You stop there. The time you don't wanna stop is when you, you've, you've taken $80,000 from the company and it comes out and you're caught and then you say, I repent. At that point your, your work's not gonna take that very seriously, you're too far down the road. The earlier you can cut off, the better. When do you quit an affair? When do you quit an emotional and sexual affair with another person? Here's when you quit. When you're getting ready to go to work or go somewhere and you're getting dressed and you're thinking about how somebody is gonna look at you. How's that, how's that woman gonna see you? How's that man gonna look at you who you're not married to? And there's this, oh, there's some conception in my mind that I care so much about what this person thinks that I'm dressing for them and not for my spouse. That'd be a good time to cut it off. Not after you've been meeting in a hotel room for six months. At that point, there's a huge amount of damage that's done. But even if you're further down the road, confess it, repent, turn away from it, and don't keep going down that road. Gossip, when you quit gossip, before you say the words, when they come to your mind, when they're conceived in your heart. Don't go to that spiritual death. I could give you a hundred examples, but you know where I'm going with this, right? You know where God's word is going. And so James encourages us to recognize there will be temptations. Cut them off early put things in the way and stop those things. If you go too far down the road and it goes from a thought to actions that are sinful, confess that, repent, turn away from it, know that God's grace is enough. But let's pray that we would recognize and battle temptation. Oh God, I know today's been a little bit longer devotional, but this is a complex passage and we wanna honor you in our lives. Help us recognize where we tend to be tempted. Help us put up things that'll block us from going down those roads. Help us cut the process off early and if we do cross the line, let us run to your arms, confess our sins, turn away from them, and receive your grace to start fresh again. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I encourage you to walk in, in the truth of God's word. Keep your eyes open for those places of temptation. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. And Sunday morning, we will see you at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. We're worshiping indoors, outdoors, online. Join us. Be part of the family of God. Let's celebrate together. Have a great day.